In today's video, I'm going to be giving this dresser a makeover. We're going to give it a fresh coat of paint, and I also want to show you how to get rid of the smell of cigarette smoke. Let's flip it. I start this makeover by removing all of the hardware. I bought this from someone on Facebook Marketplace, and it was waiting for me outside. It was a windy day. I actually didn't really smell it right away until we were in the car and suddenly it was this overwhelming stench. And I thought, oh no, here we go. I originally bought this dresser with the intentions of doing a simple makeover. I thought it was going to just be a prime paint and seal job. As it turns out, it is really stinky. So I wanna show how I handle the stench. So here I'm washing my piece off with the white lightning cleaner and then rinsing it with water afterwards. You can also use crud cutter or water and vinegar. My next step and the biggest step for cigarette smoke or smells is to spray the entire thing down with shellac. Now on this really, it's a small five drawer dresser probably for a child. I use the entire bottle of shellac. I cover the fronts of the drawers, the insides, the bottoms, the back. I flipped the dresser upside down you have to get the entire thing. At this point, I've ran out of my spray can of shellac, so I'm going to use Bin Primer. Bin Primer has shellac in it already, so that's gonna work just fine. And I'm gonna use this for the bottoms of the drawers and the backer board. You wanna cover, make sure that you cover every single inch. You wanna cover up every inch of your piece of furniture because that smoke smell for however many years has been sitting on there, is still sitting on there. We're just covering it. So if you miss a piece, you're gonna be able to smell it still. I did ultimately decide I wasn't gonna paint over or remove the warning sticker because I was a little worried about this dresser tipping. So here I'm getting ready to paint and I'm using my slick stick primer. This is a bonding primer. I'm using this because this is laminate furniture. None of it is real wood, it's just laminate. So I use my bonding primer to make sure my chalk paint sticks. Here I'm applying Mason Dixon Gray by Dixie Bell. I'm just gonna do two coats using my water mister and my Wooster brush. I've seen a lot of people discuss, should I paint laminate furniture or not? So I think next week's video, I'm gonna do a little nightstand and give you my opinions and kind of tell you my whys of why I paint laminate furniture. Here, the first coat is all finished and we're gonna go on to the second coat, but I wanna show you all these little, they're almost like water bubbles. And it happens sometimes with laminate furniture, but all you really need to do is put on a second coat. And I'll show you how nicely the second coat covers it. I'm using my sanding block just to smooth down a drip. If I ever have a drip, I just kind of grab my sanding block, smooth it, and then paint over it again. And it works great. And right there, that's how my second coat dries. It looks really nice, even and smooth. I also wanted to show you that I'm going to paint the back of this. Usually I don't paint the back of my furniture, but since I used the white primer with shellac in it because of the smell, I'm gonna paint right over it so it looks you know, halfway decent. It doesn't look like a sloppy paint job.
I seal my piece using Verithane's water-based polyurethane in satin. Now here, I try to apply my hardware, but it turns out my screws are way too long. I got these from Amazon and it was a great price for the hardware, but it's not fitting, so I have to go to plan B. I plan on selling this dresser in my booth next month, so I don't wanna use any washers or anything like that. I wanna actually cut the screw. I Right here, I know that I need to cut those two notches off. So I call my dad and I see what kind of solutions he has. And of course, he comes over with his wire stripper, which also has a bolt cutter on it. And here he is, he's showing me how to use it. You can buy them um, at Home Depot or Menards. So at the top of the tool, there's a bunch of circles. You just find out which diameter fits your screw and he just threads it through. You can see it on the other side. And then we're gonna take extra measurements because we wanna make sure that um, we clip 3 8 inch off. Now all he does is squeeze the tool and it pops right off. I was so excited about this tool because I always thought you would need a grinder and I didn't wanna deal with all that with sparks flying and stuff. And this was such a great simple solution. He actually had an extra that he gave me, so I'm pretty excited. And here's how it turned out. And it completely is free of the smoke smell. You can't smell it, not even in the least bit. So I'm super happy on how this turned out. And I hope you find this helpful. If you do, please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next week.